Good Morning Magic, I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And when I'm not designing magic cards, I might regret later, one other thing I pay attention to is Popper. It's probably no surprise, given I'm the wizard representative on the Popper format panel, but it's a format I dig a lot. Master sets are always exciting for Popper because of downshifts to common, and sets like Commander Legends are exciting because of cards appearing at common that might not normally. And while big name cards like Monastery Swift Spear might be what you're hearing the most about, there are a lot of other cards showing up. And today, I want to tell you about two sweet new brews that caught my eye. Okay, first up. So in standard, ages ago, there was this format-defining deck called Cobblade. It used squadron hawks with powerful equipment like swords, but a huge core of the engine was Jace the Mind Sculptor, letting you brainstorm away the extra hawks you found. Search for three hawks, draw three with Jace, put two hawks back on top, and then you cast the one hawk you had left over to find the other two. Such value. You've been able to brainstorm plus Squadron Hawk and Popper for over 10 years, but nobody had really cracked that nut, maybe until now. Zune took first place in the recent challenge with this deck, which I'm calling Cogate, and it looks like a masterpiece. One of the problems has been how does this deck kill without its equipment? And the secret? Gates, or namely Basilisk Gate. Using the new mana fixing gate lands, like Citadel and Seagate from Baldur's Gate, these power up Basilisk Gate, letting a single squadron hawk represent burst damage in the air. Sacred Cat can also gain you a ton of life back, and Guardian of the Guild Pact is a nigh untouchable touchable creature you can also pump up. After that, you've got a lot of great tempo and control cards. Journey to Nowhere and Counterspell, of course, and the modern age also gives you more ways to turn excess hawks into cards, then become a flyer to boot. It also lets you loot away your deep analysis to draw cards out of your graveyard. One piece I think is really clever is that the new mana fixing gates let you splash easily by letting you choose a different color than your normal colors mid-game. So the deck can easily main deck a suffocating fumes and sideboard cards cards like Red Elemental Blast and Gorilla Shaman, smooth. The deck is great, and it even has room to evolve. I've seen some people online even start to iterate on it by using Blighted Agent to try and poison people out. Here's the full deck list. Go and give it a try, and great work to Zune for this one. But enough about blue-white. I want to talk about a deck that uses some of those double masters downshifts, and maybe not the ones you were expecting. Let me ask you a question. If I go turn one young wolf, turn two bio Groth, what's your move? Because that's what Cryomancer is going to do to you with this black-green aggro sacrifice deck. We've seen a lot of slower, grindy black-green decks in the past, especially with cards like Tortured Existence, but this one hits hard. Using cards like Carrion Feeder and even Village Rights to Sacrifice Creatures like Brindleshoat on the cheap for value, it can then follow it up with a cheap bone picker, a new double master's downshift. Another new one is Dregmangler, a great attacker who can then pump up a creature out of the graveyard with its scavenge ability. How can your big creatures punch through? Good ol' Rancor will help make sure they can connect. One of my favorite inspired touches is using Nameless Aversion alongside Ghoul Razor to be able to occasionally get back a removal spell. Thanks, Tribal. Here's the full deck list, an awesome work to Cryomancer for this pretty original take on the format. So what did you think? Are you excited about these? Would you like to see more quick deck techs and spotlights in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And in the meantime, have fun with your comments. You got this. Natural Spring and Warrior's Charge, actually mini cards you will likely recognize today debuted in Portal. Wood Elves, Lava Axe, and even Windrake, cards which would go on to be staples of mini core sets and appear today in common magic parlance. Much like how any 2-mana 2-2 is a grizzly bear, any 3